that are, by almost any definition of the word, degenerates. Hi, I'm Rudy Rucker, and the degenerates we're going to talk about today are William Burroughs and Charles Bukowski. Burroughs is perhaps better known. Burroughs was one of the original beatniks. He was the uh, spiritual father of Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg. He was about 40 in the 1950s when the beatniks were first beginning to do their writing. The book I want to talk about today is not one of Burroughs' better known books. His best known book is, of course, Naked Lunch. That's probably in the library. The book I'm going to talk about now is uh, hard to get, but I'll give you the address if you do want to send for it. The book I'm talking about is called Letters to Allen Ginsberg by William Burroughs, and the time period of the letters is 1953 to 1957. This is a very interesting time in American history, the, the mid-50s. Uh, perhaps in some ways the mid-80s are a bit like them. It was a period when Eisenhower was president for what seemed like a long time, just as now we have Reagan being president for a long time. And it was a period of uh, relative peace and relative prosperity, which is also something that we have in America now. It was also a period when the status quo was basically conservative, and people who were uh, in any way deviant did tend to feel a bit cut out of society. Though that's certainly not true in the 80s to the extent that it was true in the 50s. Now, why did Burroughs feel cut out of society? Well, there were two problems. First of all, he was gay in a period when the word didn't even exist for gay. Uh, in other words, they would call it homosexual or queer, but you never heard, even, never heard the nice word gay. The other thing about Burroughs was that he was a heroin addict which is also a very unacceptable thing to do. Now, you might think a man like this wouldn't have anything interesting to say, but strangely enough, he's a very brilliant man, very funny. His writing is, uh, I've been reading him for about 20 years, and uh, he's still one of my favorite writers. Now, this particular book, Letters to Allen Ginsberg, uh, has uh, some amusing passages. The interesting thing here is that we have Burroughs, and this is the mid-50s, we have Burroughs is 40, he hasn't published anything, he's a complete failure, and he's living in Tangiers. Now, one thing about this book, it cheers you up. If you feel like you're a failure, you say, well, at least, at least I'm not, uh, not a broken down junkie in living in Algeria. You know, at least I'm still here in America and uh, I have a job. Now, Burroughs, let me just, these letters were all written to Allen Ginsberg, the famous poet, author of Howl, who was a good friend of Burroughs. And uh, let me just read one of the letters. Dear Alan, just got back from a 14-day cure in the clinic. So as usual, he's always trying to kick his heroin habit. Lost 30 pounds, no junk. Knocked out on barbiturates four days. After that, all the usual, plus a substantial case of the horrors. Still sick and sensitized to the point of hallucination. Everything looks sharp and different like it was just washed. Sensations hit like tracer bullets. I feel a great intensity building up, and at the same time, a weakness, like I can only keep myself here, back now, in this doughy, dead flesh I've been away from since the habit started. Feel like I was back from years at a concentration camp. No sex, no hunger, just not alive yet, but feel like I never feel it before. Junk is death. I don't ever want to see it, or touch it, or commerce in it. He feels that way, but of course he gets back on the habit, off and on several times through this book. So again, it's hard to really capsulize this book. Uh, if you're interested in reading it, let me just say the name, of the address of the publisher. Uh, it's called Full Court Press. It's uh, 119 Watts Street in New York City, New York, 10013. So if you write them and ask them about the Burroughs book, they would send you ordering information. I think it costs 8 or $9. It's really a very funny book. And as I say, it will make almost anyone feel good about themselves. A book that makes you feel even better than yourself is The Collected Stories of Charles Bukowski. Bukowski is a, a younger man than Burroughs. I suppose now Burroughs is in his 70s. Bukowski must be in his 60s. Uh, Bukowski is not a homosexual or a heroin addict. But he is a hopeless alcoholic. Most of his stories are about being drunk and not doing anything. And the amazing thing is the vigor with which Bukowski managed to still write after years and years of abusing himself. It's, uh, you certainly wouldn't want to live like him, but it's, it's fascinating to read the way he writes. He's, he's influenced by Ernest Hemingway. 
I think, and uh, also perhaps by Das Passos, some of the older writers. Here's one of his better stories, which is called A Reign of Women. I'll just read you the opening of this to give you a flavor of his style as well. Yesterday, which was Friday, dark and rainy, I kept saying, stay sober, man, don't fall to pieces, and I walked out the door and out onto the landlord's lawn and ducked just in time to avoid a football thrown by a future SC quarterback, and I thought, Jesus, we are not too far from 1984. I remember when I read that book, I thought, well, 1984, that's 10 million miles to China, and here it was, almost here, and I was almost dead, getting ready, chewing on the pulpy gig, getting ready to spit it out. Well, that's not enough to give you really much of, of the flavor of him. But uh, again, let me mention this book, which you probably won't find in any libraries. The address for this is City Lights Books, 261 Columbus Avenue in San Francisco, California, 94133. Um, the two interesting things that ties these two books together is that uh, these days one often feels that people that are deviant in any way, such as drug abusers as these two men, are not to be listened to, they're only sick and only need to be cured and helped. But these two men are examples of men who, despite their handicap, are immensely witty, immensely brilliant, and immensely enjoyable to read. Thank you for being with me on Brain Food again. Well, Rudy uh, interviews, rather reviews, books that, that most of us have probably never heard of. And most of us have probably never read. But it's still interesting brain yes. food, right? And he is an excellent writer yes, himself. He I have a read a couple of his books, and they're truly wonderful. So I think that I probably would like something that he would recommend. Right, and if you happen to uh, read the uh, New York Times book reviews, he has reviewed books in there before. Yes. So we ought to try, I don't have a microphone. That's right. Well, you can just hold it right up there. Okay. <laughs> so um, we ought to try maybe to take a look at some of the things that he reviews. That's right. Now, we've got some... <laughs>